So this video is going to conclude the series by taking a look at the roughness output for this material. Because right now, so far it's looking pretty good, but it's really, really glossy. It looks like everything's kind of saran wrapped, and so we're not going to want to ideally keep that roughness. I also want to change my mesh to be the rounded cylinder. I find this much easier just to visualize my roughness on because I can catch uh, kind of grazing angles a little bit easier. So we're going to go with that. So I'll come down to where we've got our uh, roughness output here. And the way I like to work is first by defining some of the surface and the edge information, which we can then use to start uh, recalculating or reconfiguring our roughness. So the way I do that, right, if we get some surface or edge information is from our normal map. And I particularly like to use the curvature smooth. Now I'm not going to use this curvature smooth just in case, you know, if we wanted to go ahead and make some changes to uh, our edges here for our albedo. So I'll just run off another curvature smooth, which is specific for our roughness. We can run that off there. Add a curvature smooth. And I'll bring this over and we'll just plug this in immediately. And we can get rid of this guy. So that's going to make pretty much everything really, really rough, right? Even if I kind of move my light around, we can see that maybe some of the dirt is still a little glossy. And for those of you that maybe are not as aware what a roughness map is actually indicating, the brighter or whiter areas are indicating areas that are rough, and the darker areas are indicating areas that are glossier, so something that's a little bit uh, shinier or smoother looking. So technically this is kind of inverted as to what I'm interested in doing for our roughness map. I'm going to go ahead and add a levels node onto this. And we'll just kind of switch those inputs. So now it's going to look a little weird from a, I guess, kind of what we're used to seeing standpoint, right? But um, this is actually going to make more sense for a roughness map where if we take a look, right, we're going to get some of the, uh, glossy areas kind of towards the more uh, smoother surfaces and obviously the dirt is a little bit uh, rougher by default right so it's not going to be as glossy so immediately uh, immediately that already looks much much better but uh, there, we're going to do some stuff to make it a little bit more flexible to our material so the first thing i want to do is actually be able to mask off our dirt area from our rocks so i'll add a blend and again, we already know how to do all that because we've been using that particular mask. So if I come back to where we've got our height blend mask here, and I think I've actually, yeah, I've connected it down over here, right? So we've got this mask. So I can go ahead and select this guy, plug him into the opacity there. And what I'll do is just, well, one, I'll move this out of the way so we're not getting confused. And I'll just go ahead and duplicate this guy and plug him in over top. So now if we take a look at our blend here, this is going to be our rocks. So I can make our rocks much glossier independently from the dirt if I wanted to. So maybe I'll bring you know, the roughness up, uh, or sorry, the glossiness up just a little bit. Bring in our dark value clamp and our white value clamp just to give it a bit of a mid gray so that we're not getting something too glossy, too shiny, but something a little bit, uh, obviously a little smoother. So that's an okay start. And again, for our dirt here, uh, I maybe want to make it a little rougher, but I want to add some areas of uh, just general glossiness. So if I can angle the light accordingly there, Maybe bring up our mid value there just a little bit, just to have some peaking areas of um, rough as well as intermittent areas of glossy. And I'm also going to make sure that we can't get either peak white or peak black values. So ideally for a roughness map, um, unless you have a very contrasted area, like uh, say a, a reflective surface, like a window or something like that, or like a raw polished metal, you're really not going to want to have uh, two contrasted areas. And so I try and bring my roughness map somewhat 
I wouldn't say uniformly grayscale or like intermittent gray values, but you definitely want to try and avoid just pure black or pure white because those really can't uh, quite exist in our real world. So now that we've established a roughness or a base roughness for our dirt and our rocks here, I want to go ahead and actually give the uh, different foliage their own kind of roughness, right? And we're going to again draw this from our surface information, so our curvature. And we're just going to need to mask them off individually. Well, again, we've already masked them off for our albedo here. But we're just going to go ahead and use these uh, masks that we've created using the shape splatter mask to do essentially the same thing. So I'm going to add three blends real quick. And then I'm going to go ahead and just plug in each one of our masks right into the opacity of these guys here. Awesome. So now we can see that we've got our purely black leaves or foliage showing up. And so they're going to be really, really glossy. And like I said, we're just going to be doing essentially the same exact thing that we've been doing for our initial uh, roughness values. So what I'll do is add another levels, bring this out and over, and I'm just going to bring our connection socket up there. But now when I hit control D and control D again, we'll be able to just get these three connections. So I'll go ahead and plug these all in. And now if we take a look, right, you can see that we're going to get some of them uh, a little bit glossier, right, in the more recessed areas, uh, some of them a little bit uh, shinier up in the areas on the rocks. And so it's going to be a little bit uh, inconsistent or non-cohesive. So first, let's take a look at our first leaves here. And which one is that going to be? So it's going to be those guys down there. So I'm going to want to, uh, again, invert our color values here or our grayscale values, and maybe bring the dark value in, right, to give it some, some glossiness. I want to have some kind of glossiness or smoothness for my roughness on the foliage. And I'll bring in our black output and our white output. And really, it's going to be a matter of just kind of fiddling around with these values. So maybe it looks like it's still a little bit too glossy, but maybe I'll just dial that back in. And we can do something kind of like that, just so that it helps it stand out just a little bit. And we'll pretty much do the same thing for the other foliage here. So now we can take a look at these guys. All right, and these are going to be the, the fatter ones. So again, I'll invert this color there. Maybe bring in the outputs just a little bit. And I just want to make sure that they have a little bit of a shimmer as the light passes by. So I'm liking how this is looking up over here, down kind of towards the middle areas. Maybe not as much. We can just bring this more like that. And I'm thinking that's looking okay. Obviously, we're going to play around with it a little bit more so that we can kind of add some cohesiveness to it. But I just want to give it some base values to start. And finally, I'll just kind of quickly run through this last one here because it's pretty much uh, same old, same old as we've been doing for the past couple minutes. Just make it a little bit glossier. I want to bring up the outputs or bring in the outputs so that it's not pure black or white. And we'll get something that's just kind of glossy like that. That's looking pretty sweet. Now to really tie this in all together, what I want to do is just kind of add a bit of a grunge kind of texture over top of everything, just to hopefully try and tie it together. Because right now, right, we've got this, uh, well, it's, it's relatively cohesive, but definitely there's very segmented parts, right? Where we've got our rocks as kind of one consistent uh, grunge or uh, roughness, I should say. We've got our dirt is kind of one consistent and then our uh, foliage as well, right? But when the foliage falls into kind of the dirt regions, that's where we also kind of get the blending of the dirt with the particular foliage. 
So I kind of want to try and continue that by tying it together a little bit more. So what we'll do is add another blend here. And I'm going to add a grunge map. So we're going to do a B and W spots too. Again, I really like this particular map just because it gives us a variation of uh, some random noise that I really like. And I'll go ahead and plug this in. And for the blend, now I typically like to add rough informations personally um, using the screen blending mode. And sometimes I find that it's very difficult when adding grayscale information, just how you want to add it and how you actually want it to affect your particular roughness map. So when you're adding this kind of random grunginess to it, I just kind of have a direction overall. So am I going to add roughness? Am I going to add glossiness? Um, sometimes it gets a little bit difficult when you try and do something like, uh, well, like just the normal copy mode, or if we do add linear dodge or add subtract, right? Where it's adding glossiness, but also roughness. Um, it kind of makes blending it in a little bit more difficult because it's doing two almost completely opposite or different operations. So I try and keep it just to doing one thing. So we'll go back to screen. Like I said, gets rid of the darker values, only keeps the, uh, the lighter values, which for a roughness map, remember, is for rougher values. And then that way, at least I know what this particular node in this blend is doing. So I'm going to bring that down to about 0 0.3, just so that it's kind of an overall uh, grunginess. And maybe that's a little too much, so maybe I'll even bring it down to something like stripe 0.2. And so that's going to give us just some random grunginess for the rocks, right? Some random specks here and there. And this will allow us now, if we wanted to come back to, say, our rocks here, and I think this one was our rocks, right? If we wanted to increase kind of the roughness overall, we can do that if I just control Z that, right? And bring this back down. We can maybe add a little bit more uh, glossiness to the rocks, but we're also still going to be getting kind of those inconsistent uh, rougher areas. And so that's really, really powerful. And really why the roughness map is a really important map overall. Now that being said, I'm not going to get too into the weeds uh, with this particular roughness map because that's for you to do. Get a little bit creative, play around and see what interests you about developing your roughness map. But I'll show you just to finish out my particular roughness maps. I like to go ahead and just sharpen them up a little bit. So I'm going to add a sharpen node. And now by default, uh, it's going to set the intensity to one. Uh, that's a little, <laughs> a little sharp. Right? It doesn't look terrible on our uh, roughness here, but um, you know, for areas like this, maybe that's a little bit too sharp of a roughness. Right? So you get this kind of, uh, I don't know, I find, the, I find the look of it a little bit odd. So I don't want to do something that sharp. Instead, I'll just kind of have that and do 0 0.5. Again, add a little bit of crispness to the overall uh, roughness map, but it doesn't just completely blow it out and make my pixel values just completely unruly. So that concludes our roughness map as well as our cobblestone material. So I hope you guys learned a thing or two. I definitely had a lot of fun playing around with this material and showing some techniques that I use to develop some pretty cool looking rocks and dirt and foliage. Make sure to shoot any questions or comments or concerns you have down in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them up. And in general, thanks for watching the series. Don't forget, if you want to be able to grab the working files for this project, as well as download the videos themselves, I've got all that stuff up on Gumroad for a price for just a small fee, just to help me out with developing these types of courses and continuing to develop learning content. But obviously there's no obligation because I've got them all up on here on YouTube as well. All the best in your artistic endeavors, and I'll see you guys in the next series.